here in the Rich Eisen Show studio, a perfect guest to talk about what it means to play football and be out there on the sideline and, of course, maybe get a little emotional in the press conference. Yeah, yeah no Dick question. Dick Vermeule here on the Rich no Eisen question. Show. And that was touching, very touching. I don't know how many Tony Romo's there are, but I think we have some coming up. You know, the greatest thing you can be as a guy like him mm -hmm. is a good example, especially for the next guy. You know, we got the Brady's, the Breezes, the Roethlisberger's. They're all going to be put in the same position soon. And what a great example. What a what a great message. Because you could see there, Dick, that he yeah, he looked a little sick to his stomach oh, sometimes. I know that feeling. It's coming from right underneath the heart, you know. It's touching, you know. Yeah. And and then for him to say that he's I, I do believe he means it that he he remembers what it was like oh, when sure he was he taking the spot from Bledsoe. Yeah. yeah. The first two years there, he didn't take many snaps from the third year on. He took a lot of them. Right. Yeah. Did you ever have a situation like that? I mean, uh, where a quarterback where had been around? Well, Roman Gabriel, mm -hmm. long time ago in Philadelphia, was a great man, a great influence on my career because I was an assistant coach when he was playing for the Los Angeles Rams. And then when I went to Philadelphia as a head coach, he was there, and he was at the end of his career. And really a quality guy, and I learned a lot from him as a young coach. Mm -hmm. And he had to step away, you know, and, and he did it with grace. Was Jaws integrity. the guy pushing him? Was that was that yeah, Jaws? Yeah, I brought Jaworski in to take the job. Yeah, from here. We, he was playing Los Angeles at the time. Yeah. So did you have to sit Roman Gabriel down in the same way? Explain it to him, yeah. You know, in that time, they weren't making the kind of money they make today. You know, you, they were making enough to make a living, not make a lifetime living, mm -hmm. you know. and uh, But uh, those uh, guys, you know, of course, we had the Trent Green situation where he came to play and got hurt in the third preseason game and couldn't play the whole year. And I watched him go through that year and uh, that feeling underneath uh, that he represents such integrity, but such disappointment at the same time. I got to tell you, because Trent Green, as you know, yeah. does uh, broadcast TV and radio sometimes. Yeah. Doing a great and job. And that last year, um, when it was the closing of the Edward Jones Dome, mm -hmm. he was doing the radio broadcast of the Thursday night football game that NFL Network, and we yeah. brought Kurt in uh -huh. to do. Uh -huh. And in the meeting beforehand, the two of them yeah. met and talked. And I got to be honest with you, the rest of us in the room were like, not looking, right? Yeah. <laughs> but the two of them could not have been greater together. Oh, yeah. They're very, they're comparable quality, quality people, you know, and they could only show great uh, appreciation and compassion for each other because that's what they are. You know what, you work with them. Right, but yeah. for those of us that there still is that moment yeah. where at some point, Mm -hmm. Kurt Warner had that opportunity, yeah. and he took well, with injury. This one's a little different. I'm with Dick Vermeule yeah. here in the studio. I mean, this is it's different. Where it's a young kid that's playing way above yeah. what yeah. normally you'd expect of a rookie quarterback. One of five guys in the league over 100 something quarterback efficiency rating. He's one of them. Mm -hmm. Okay, as a rookie. Yeah. Who's the best rookie quarterback you've ever? Well, seen, I'm going to say, yeah. Jeez, I, I go back to Elway. Mm -hmm. And Dan Marino, those kind of guys. These guys are equivalent. Mm -hmm. uh, Carson Wentz in Philadelphia is very, very special. Very special. Doesn't have quite the supporting cast that they have in, in Dallas, but uh, going to be equal to those kind of guys. You know, amazing. And and here we have Tony Romo. He probably has three or four more real good years left. Would you, as if you're a coach of a team, uh, go ahead and bring Without him in? Without hesitation. There's no such thing as a long future in the National Football League. <laughs> you, you, you better win. That's all there is to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I, without hesitation. Why? Because the kind of person he is and what he will bring beyond his performance as a player to your entire roster. Yeah. Special. Dick Vermeil here on the Rich Eisen Show studio. Are you in contact with Doug Peterson currently yes. right now? Uh -huh. A little bit, yeah. So what do you? I follow him closely. Mm -hmm. I follow. I give suggestions from time to time. Little. I, I text him little themes for the week because I've I've experience those same things like what like what well uh, there's a that there's time to be uh your best is it when you're playing the best mm -hmm. you got to get like getting ready to play pittsburgh you know and the pittsburgh's already given credit for being a great team mm -hmm. but they haven't proved it yet you know make them prove it don't don't give them credit for being a great team go kick their ass so you and they did, you know? <laughs> and they yeah. did. Yeah. so you tech you text that yeah and he, he right? always responds quickly mm -hmm. i text with andy reed uh, you know, Andy was a great example for him as a football coach. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Doug Peterson, I think, is going to be a really good one. Yeah. Yeah. Dick Vermeule here in studio uh, on the Rich Eisen, show, Rich Eisen Show set. So Andy Reid, 
All he keeps doing is winning down there. I know. It's amazing. I mean, they've won 17 in their last 19 games, Dick. Unbelievable. And you know what it's like in that community down there to yeah. win football games. And none of them are blowouts. I don't know. <laughs> it's I, a wonder he doesn't weigh 180 pounds. <laughs> 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 you know, I know him well. How he can, week in and week out, I text him, Andy, you're, you're driving us crazy coming from behind like that. Mm -hmm. But most of their games are close. Yeah. Well, this past week is it one of a perfect behind. example. Yeah. Down 17-3, and then they – and then they beat Carolina. What, why do you think – what sort of quarterback is Alex Smith then? I mean, because that's why I think a lot of people think that he can't go for point for point with, say, Brady or even well, Derek Carr right now, who he's gonna he's already yeah. beaten in division. What Sometimes you, it's the design of the scheme, mm -hmm. what you're really asking him to do. I don't think they ask him to go downfield very often with the ball. I don't think that means he can't. They just don't. They play a real control pass offense because – there's only two ways you move the football offensively, mm -hmm. running and throwing a completed pass. You know, mm -hmm. you ask most people, they'll say running and passing. No, wrong. Mm -hmm. You've got to throw a completed pass to move the ball. And Andy Reid's quarterbacks do that. Nick Foles jumped in for two games, and what's he do? He can't play in St. Louis, and all of a sudden, he's back playing winning quarterback. They throw completed passes. And they're not sometimes a long ways downfield, but you still have to defend it downfield. Do you miss coaching? Oh, yeah, yeah. At 80 years old, you can't do it, but you're darn right. I miss it. I miss it. I miss, like Tony Romo, I miss the relationships. It's unbelievable how close you can become with your coaches, your team, your management, your players when you're in that kind of competition week in and week out. Dick Vermeule here on the Rich Eisen Show. Who was the coach who gave you a start, Dick? Who was the guy? Well, in, John Ralston gave me a start in okay. college coaching okay. when he hired me from Napa Junior College to come to Stanford. And then I went from there to the Los Angeles Rams with George Allen in 1969. So before George Allen gave you the call, though, when you were in Stanford, Bill Walsh was on that staff, correct? Yeah, so was Jim Mora. Senior. Yeah, senior. Right. Yeah. Obviously. Jim Mora replaced Bill Walsh. When he went to the Oakland Raiders, Jim Mora came in and replaced Bill Walsh on the staff. So that's how long yeah. you go back with him. Yeah, yeah, and then Jim came with me to UCLA when I was the head coach. What was Bill? Did you know at the time that Bill Walsh was? I knew Bill well at that time. He mm -hmm. was probably the number one reason I was hired at Stanford. He was a graduate assistant at San Jose State when I was a player, or trying to be a player. Mm -hmm. So we became very close, and he was going to go be the head football coach. He was the head football coach at Washington High School in Fremont, California, and I was going to do his, I was going to do my student teaching under him, uh -huh. and he got a job at Cal, so I went someplace else. <laughs> he was only there a short period of time. Marv Levy hired him at University of California. This is incredible. Yeah, the tree is just unreal, uh, right? Huh? Wow, come on. Out. So then George Allen calls you up on Stanford and says, how would yes. you like to come coach uh, he with me? He was a good friend of the, the Olympic track coach from Stanford University, Peyton Jordan. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, he called Peyton. He said, I'm looking to hire some young coach as the first special teams coach in pro football. No one has one. And Peyton Jordan recommended me. And I, I didn't, I, but I knew him well from working at Stanford, but he was not a football coach. So you were the first ever special teams mm -hmm. coach? 1969, yeah. In the NFL? Right. For George Allen? Right. The reason he wanted a special teams coach, they had lost a game because of a kickoff return for a touchdown. The season's over. They missed the playoffs because of that game. George Allen had the staff go back and evaluate every kickoff coverage. And the two guys that missed the tackle, that gave up the touchdown that cost them the playoff berth, never made a tackle all year, but no one knew it. And he said, I need somebody looking at these videos, at that time film, every week. So he decided to hire a special teams coach, and I was fortunate enough to be the guy. And you were the guy. Yeah. Now, George Allen, the most superstitious guy you've ever been around? Well, yeah, you of know, all he, time? he was an a, a unbelievable detail preparation guy. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the coaches knew to stay away from him the day before a game because he would ask you questions you couldn't answer. What do you mean? And it, it meant, like, I'm getting off the plane. We're landing in Chicago to play the, the Bears in the old stadium there, and he walks up to me and he says, did you check the sun at one kickoff time? <laughs> because your returners are going to have to look up. Will they be looking into the sun? I had no idea what to say. <laughs> but, you know, so I sort of learned to stay away from him in those critical times because he would come up with some kind of question to check your detailed preparation. And, and what it did it to me, it forced me to think what he might ask me next in terms of a detailed preparation question. So what do you think of all these analytics now that is being used in the NFL, that teams are now bringing in stat 
conscious, analytic oriented. Well, that's in schemes. baseball and, right. and basketball. They're even. now bringing it into the NFL. Well, it's been in the know. NFL a long time. You know, I I use Bill Saunders, Bud Goody reports every week to right. keep me abreast of what's going overall picture. For those who might not league. know who that what that is, what was Bud that? Bud Goody was the first guy to computerize the National Football League and and programmed to where it gave you more than a stat. It gave you a correlation to the importance of the game and the outcome. And, and also came up with a predicting thing. It's scary to this day, <laughs> predicting wins and losses, this computer thing. So you, were, you, were, you believed in that? I, the- I, I always felt there were a lot of statements made about the game that weren't true. And if you went back and studied the numbers, you could. it didn't change the outcome, but you could better realize mm-hmm. what is really true and what is really like, you know, like mm-hmm. for that say, boy, the average per rush is really critical in the game. Well, it's not critical to the outcome of the ballgame. Mm-hmm. The number of rushes is critical, but the average per rush isn't really critical. It, it bears all these kinds of things uh, bear fruit when you really study the numbers. Yeah. So did you, for two point charts, did you come up with something for something yeah, like that? We did that. Tommy Prothrow and I, when I was the offensive coordinator at UCLA did that. You know, he was a great bridge player and a great statistician. And we together built the first when to go and when not to go. And then I, myself and Mike White, as I came back into coaching later in 97, we, we tweaked it to meet maybe what the standards were at that time. What do you think what the Steelers are doing, which is essentially going for two almost every time right now? You know, you know I, I, don't, I don't study what they do that much. I've watched them play, uh, you know. Gambling is gambling, or else they'd call it sure thing taking. Okay, yeah. you, know, you know there is no. I just I'm I was never a big gambler. But I, I, I would want to play the odds. Mm-hmm. Like fourth down conversion is forty nine percent in the league. Well, you got a fifty one percent chance you could hurt your football team for winning. And I'm saying no, I I didn't have that confidence that. So that two percent difference was all you needed to know yeah. to not. Well, that that stat changes sometime. every year too. Sure, okay. but I want it in the back of my mind. So you'd have all this at your fingertips with your headset on. Yeah. Dick Vermeule here on the Rich Eisen Show studio. Now senior, let's talk about Jim Moore senior. Yeah. You know, Jim Moore to me mm-hmm. is one of the most underrated fine football coaches that ever coached in this league. He was a fine football coach. You know, he was a Marine. Yeah, oh yeah. Had a Marine disposition oh yeah. and discipline and uh, and command about him. I always really still do respect him. Me and too. Love I don't that think man. the I don't think he was given enough credit for being as good as he was. You know, he took over New Orleans. You know, the Pope couldn't win in New Orleans, and he did. <laughs> you know, he just, he did an unbelievable job there. Well, he still, um, as you know, is uh, in the uh, media, and he works games in New Orleans after, um, after you know, post game yeah. for the local NBC affiliate. When they fell to 0 3, take a listen and look, look at this moment when his. On-air colleague, his host, suggested that the season might be over at 0-3. Check it out. But is the season over? No, the season. God, I hate to hear that. I hate to hear that. I'm just saying the statistics is the, say. Is, is the season over? They have, thir- they have 13 more games to play. Six- are they, is the season over? Are they, can they go home and pack their bags and go home? You just said the season's over. That's the most negative statement that I hear from fans and media ever. <laughs> ever. And it bugs me. Okay, well, how long is this? Season over. No, there's 13 more games to play. 13 more games to play, and you're saying the season's over? Unbelievable. I'm just saying <laughs> Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, that's so true for him, you know. And uh, he's, he's such a special guy. But that's Jim Mora. Oh, yeah. You're never going to misunderstand what he has on his mind. Okay, and that's a great quality because there's no BS. Did you ever go off on a press conference like that? Oh, Did when I was the... young, I made some mistakes like, yeah. What you mean? When I was really young, too intense, too emotional. In... Uh, like, I can remember doing a few. Yeah. Where, in Los Angeles? Philadelphia. Philly. Yeah. How's that Philly media? I didn't realize how it is. You know, because when you, you're a, a coach, I never read the media. John Wooden told me to never read the paper with your name in it during the season or listen to radio talk shows when you're coaching. Don't do that. After okay. And he said, don't let anybody tell you what they're saying. Because what they say about you that it's good is probably not all true. And what they say about you that it's bad is probably all true. Not true. You don't need 
you, the, 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 you don't need the dis distraction. Mm -hmm. So I stayed away from it. But as a young coach in Philadelphia a few times, I really overloaded my rear end with my mouth a few how, times. <laughs> yeah, I did. How many conversations did you have with Wooden when you were on the campus at UCLA? As many as I could. <laughs> as would, many as I would could. Would you knock on his door? What, oh, what? yeah. Oh, yeah. And it, we had breakfast together a lot uh, during the season because he would walk the track and then come sit down at the training table with me at breakfast time oh my and talk. And then I had private sessions with him and uh, had co my I had – John Wooden conducted meetings with my coaches about all the things about coaching, not, you know, football, basketball, it doesn't matter, just about coaching and teaching. And, uh, you know, he was a very positive influence in my life. And then here, here you are, UCLA guy, Napa born, right? Are you born? Yeah, born and raised in Calistoga, north end of the valley. And yeah. now here you are after your career is over, yeah. Vermeer Wines, you're a vintner. Yeah. You know, and you're and you're involved. on the track to yourself, right? Oh, I yeah. mean, you're... I, I spent we spent three weeks out there during the harvest this year. What you can't predict is exactly when they're going to pick all the grapes. Mother Nature take care of that. I missed picking the Cabernet this year. I like picking the Cabernet because that's my favorite grape, mm -hmm. fa favorite bottle of wine. But so I, we had to come home because I had other obligations at that. Time. It's so good. It Your wine good. is so good. And it's getting Coach. better. We're trying to make the playoffs. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you're trying to make the playoffs? Well, keep getting better, you know. Sure. You can never be satisfied with it. Do you, ever, do you ever stop and think, you know, these two endeavors that you're so passionate about for so long, coaching and, and being a vintner, you can't control so no. much. No. You've done that so much. I know. And, you know, but the great thing, there's it, it, it's always – a challenge to get better mm -hmm. and it, it tests you yourself mm -hmm. it keeps you going it keeps you young it mm -hmm. keeps you thinking it keeps your mind working you know it also helps to hang out with katie perry like you did last night yeah right? i'll tell you i didn't I, I didn't realize she was as tall as she is but she had pretty high heels on. <laughs> pretty lady so you were <laughs> <laughs> neil diamond was there too i've been a neil diamond fan all my life at the capitol records yeah. 75th bash yeah you were there last night right neil diamond was there yeah did he did you talk football with him? Carol got her picture taken with him. She, she, did he? Nothing like grandma's hugging Neil Diamond, you know. Tell me, <laughs> tell, tell me, he's saying "Sweet Caroline" to you. That's what she knows. She said "Sweet Caroline." That's what she said to him. <laughs> and so he was there last night. Yeah, Katy Perry. Yeah. Dick, love hanging with you. Thank you. It's always love great to be it. with you. Love. You're it. great at what you do. You too. Thank you. You too. Love those wines. Go to VermeerWines.com if you love the grapes. This man can pick them and. Put them in a bottle, and it's fantastic. It's so Thank good. You, you are you. always welcome to be here. The Rich Eisen Show, weekdays at noon Eastern on Audience.